Welcome to Upon This Rock. Today we're continuing the series of Through the New Testament in 2022. We're in Luke chapter 7, jumping in verse 1. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. They came to Jesus as representatives for the centurion and stated that the centurion was worthy. Verse 5, For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from their house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. While even the Jewish representatives said that he was worthy, he himself said he was unworthy. This man had both great faith and great humility. Verse 7, Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. He understood Jesus had true authority. Verse 8, For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. He understood that Jesus' authority was above even sickness, and at his word, sickness had to be healed. Verse 9, when Jesus heard these sayings, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Here he marvels at the centurion's great faith. In Mark 6, 6, he marveled at his own people's unbelief. We want to be known for our faith, not our unbelief. Verse 10, And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. And it came to pass that day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, and the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And a bier is a frame that carried the coffin. Romans 4.17 says, God, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Verse 15, And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another. Even John, who Jesus said was the greatest, began to doubt as he sat in prison awaiting his trial, suggesting even he misunderstood to some degree exactly what Jesus had come to do. Continuing on verse 20. When the men were coming to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Jesus displayed his power not through political deliverance, as was expected, but instead meeting the needs of individuals. Verse 22, Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Jesus realized the Jews had expected political deliverance from Rome. Verse 24, And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously appeared and live delicately are in king's courts. 
But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. John died before the cross, so he did not live under the new covenant. Verse 29. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptisms of John. The work John had done prior to Jesus being revealed as the Messiah had been beneficial. Those that had truly repented had a heart ready to receive the message of Jesus. Verse 30, But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Where unto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, and saying, We have pipe unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath the devil. The Son of Man is coming eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a winebibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. For those that had hardened hearts instead of repented ones, they were unable to accept any messenger, as their hearts were turned off to truth itself. This is why living with a heart of repentance is so important. Verse 35, but wisdom is justified of all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Specifically referring to her as a sinner suggests that she had some great sin in her life that was also probably widely known. Going to a Pharisee's house would have been an intimidating experience, but shows a desperation for Jesus that we should all strive to have, to be willing to exit our comfort zone in pursuit of our Creator. Verse 38, and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him for she is a sinner. Simon knew the reputation of this woman and seemed to assume that Jesus did not, then coming to the false conclusion that Jesus could not see hearts. However, Jesus disproves this in the very next verse by responding to what was in the Pharisee's heart. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. The more we are forgiven, given or perhaps the more honest we are with ourselves about our hopeless spiritual state without God, the more we will love him and express that love to him. Verse 44, and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, seest thou this woman? Simon saw her failures, but Jesus saw her love and repentant heart. Continuing verse 44, I'd entered into thy house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. The love we display for God reflects our repentance. As the more one is forgiven, the more the love that person will have. God's mercy and grace is free, but repentance is how we receive it. Verse 48, And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins 
also. And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. When we come to Jesus and pour out our love for him and live with a repentant heart, we can walk with a peace this world cannot provide. Thank you for joining Upon This Rock. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and God bless.